Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel TCG. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a different video. We're going to be reviewing a new game I just got sent, Legacies Allure. This is a new collectible card game. It's on a board, um, which is a little different, I think very interesting, and it also centers a bit around drafting, which is my favorite way to interact with card games. So I'm really excited to show this game off. I got sent this little package. I think this is just the promotional package sent to content creators. Um, and yeah, thank you Legacies Alert for sending this to me. I'm excited to kind of go through here and look at what we got sent. So it comes with a getting started guide. This has the full explanation of what everything does. I did play um, one quick game with the creator and it was quite fun. It definitely makes you think a lot. Every move has a very interesting um, choice behind it, which I like a lot. It definitely reminds me of Flesh and Blood. And then we've got the rules book. It's nice to have as well. And then even a lore book. This is actually really nice. I think that's really cool. I love when anything comes with lore. It looks really well made too. I mean, the, the art's really nice. And then it even has like a description. I think these are each of the leaders here. Yep. Yeah, there's, so there's a, it's a leader-based game, just like Flesh and Blood as well. And very cool. And uh, the leader can die and you can still win. It's not like the leader is you in the same way. Um, but the leader is like your strongest unit and kind of what your strategy is based around is cool. So we've got the mat. I'm not gonna be able to pull out the whole thing because I think it's quite big. So really, really nice quality. It's this cloth mat. So it's really easy to just bring with you and you play on these hexagons. This is really nice quality, actually. And you play on these hexagons here. Like each card takes up one hexagon. And uh, I don't know if I can show, I think it's this yellow this yellow hexagon you can see in the center here. The game, uh, you decide who is the attacker and who's the defender via coin flip or rock, paper, scissors, or dice roll or whatever you want to do. And then um, whoever's the attacker only wins is it if they end the last turn in with a card in the yellow center hexagon. The defender wins if the attacker does not have a card in the center yellow hexagon here. So uh, very interesting. You know, there's a slight defender advantage in the sense that all they have to do is keep the attacker out. The attacker has to try their best to get in that one square. But obviously, there's some advantages back to the attacker, like they get to move first and they get some other advantages. So. I think it's pretty well balanced. I think it's a very interesting way to decide who wins. There's no like life total or any other kind of resource system in that way. Um, I think the only resource system when I was trying it out was basically like the the mana. Um, so we're gonna open this up here, and we've got two starter decks, two pre-constructed kingdoms. They're called. We've got Carthul and Tristan. I'm gonna open these both up here. Um, I think these were the ones we played in the starting game too. Carthul is like a orc mage, I think. And then Tristan is a defensive human knight. Gives you a little bit of a description on the back. And when you're playing, I believe you decide on an army size. And then you draft back and forth that army size. These are all the backs. Really cool. It says attacker or defender, so you get one for the game and then you know which you are. And then every card here, really nice set, has a value, so this one costs three gold, and there's different levels of gold you can play at, and when you're playing the game, you draft up to that much. So uh, if you're bringing a 50, if you're playing a 50 gold game, I think you start out with like something like double it, so you would lay out like 100 gold in cards and you have them all face up so you and your opponent can each see each other's. And then you will pick one back and forth until you both get to 50. So I could take this really strong Fire Fist Minotaur for 12 gold, and then my opponent will take one and we go back and forth until we get to 50. And because you're going back and forth, you can counter pick, right? So if my Goblin Archer is a really good tech card for one of my opponent's specific cards, I can just leave it and not need it. But if they uh, end up picking a card that's counters, I can pick this after. So. Uh, there is like it's not a sideboard as traditional card games go, um, but you do have a level of uh, tech cards you can play and only pick them um, from your deck if they're needed. 
Um, and then we have the commander here. Uh, we got different stats, so the ranged characters can hit um, other characters on different hexes farther away. Um, we even have, I really like this, because you're not shuffling the deck at all, you start with all of them on the board, you can flip a card over to find out what any of the keywords do. So this one has allied pathing and charging, and you can flip it over to find out what those do. It's a really nice mechanic, and basically as you're drafting your cards, you pick them up, you say I'm going to pick this one for four gold, and then you place it in a hexagon on your side of the board, and uh, you just go like that back and forth. So I think that's really interesting. Um, I definitely recommend checking out the website if you want to see more of the rules. Um, I, I mean, that I kind of gave it a rundown real quick there. Obviously, the combat, the combat is a little self-explanatory. You know, you like move and then they attack and they have health and they have, uh, they have power and they can hit based on range and they have keywords. It's mostly self-explanatory, um, but we do have uh, these dice that come with as well to mark things like health and any kind of other stats. There is mana, um, so if we look at our main dude here, um, he's going to want to use spells sometimes, which you can also draft spells that he'll be able to use. There's even different levels, so if you want just a level 2, you can spend a little less than a level 3. And then mana is a resource that just goes down every time you use it, so this one costs 2 mana. If you start with 4 mana, he'll go down to 2 mana if you want to use that. Um, so very interesting there. He starts with five mana. It's a little hard to see on the camera, but yeah, he starts with five. So you get five casts. After that, he's just doing that. But then you can even draft stuff. These are all ways to help out your commander. So this one gives him plus one cast range. This one gives him a spell he can use. This one gives him passive mana regeneration. All super interesting. And I really, really can't understate how cool the drafting mechanic is. Um, you know, drafting is, and limited, is one of my favorite ways to play any kind of card game and being able to draft your deck a little different every time you can have like two different whole strategies within your your deck and then based on what your opponent's doing you can switch them um, and a lot of card games like flesh and blood do have a little bit of a pivot there like dash you know can switch between pistol dash or boost dash based on what the opponent is but this is like shifting your whole deck which is really interesting um, and then we've got these humans here this is a little more of a defensive build because we have uh, the leader here, Tristan, who has a lot more health, and he gets a lot of tanky buffs that help him stay alive. So this one we've got um, some armor, some health regeneration, some magic resist, um, lots of extra buffs here. So this one is really cool. I really enjoyed the games I played, um, and I definitely recommend you check this game out. Uh, it's really, really enjoyable, and uh, it's definitely a nice mix between board game and card game it has drafting mechanics um i think it's really interesting and you know i personally i can only be like a one uh card game at a time kind of guy so i don't really go for um it's, it's not at least easy for me to main more than like just flesh and blood but i can play a different game if it's a good bit different right and this isn't just a traditional trading card game it has a board you have to move your guys around so I definitely recommend checking this out. It's a great tabletop game to play with friends as well. And it comes with lots of really great dice. I mean, these all have things on them. It says blue, we've got disarmed, sorry, buff, disarmed, hedge. It's got all of like the different keywords, rooted, broken, solar aegis. I mean, that's really cool. It comes with all sorts of dice. And then I'm spilling dice, but we've got all the different colored dice based on health, mana, um, all different sorts of resources here. Uh, and I think this is really well made. I mean, I. I think this is a really interesting game, and um, I'm excited to get some games in with my friends. I'm going to be playing these starter decks with them, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to try out other stuff. I just have these starter decks for now, but I'm also interested in building my own custom kingdoms, because I think that's really cool, getting to pick each card. Each card really does have a purpose. Um, I know in a lot of card games, you could say each card have a purpose, but in this one especially, you can really just know exactly where you want to play each one and, and there's a lot of depth since you draft back and forth every game there's never going to be two games that are exactly the same so uh yeah thank you to legacy zolor for sending this package to me really appreciate it thank you all for watching remember to like subscribe comment and i'll see you next time